Reductionism. In the old style of science under a Newtonian physics, scientists were trying to reduce complex situations to simple one type of vectors. We might take a large building and, con and reduce all of the forces of that building into a certain vector. Reductionism found v great success in non-living things, systems that were not as complex. So in making a car engine, reductionism is a science that is highly needed in developing brakes and brake pads for your car. We need to use reductionism. We need to have this type of Newtonian system. But in more complex systems, we started finding out with chaos theory that in more complex systems, such as the weather, that there actually was fractals, much more complexity, and that we could not use reductionism in complex situations. The weather doesn't repeat. We can't set up an experiment where we have a before and after and be able to measure the effects because it is fractal. It is very complex. We have a complex system known as a non-linear system, whereas reductionism were more linear systems. Science has now gone this direction with almost everything from electronics, even business dynamics has gone into fractals and looking at the complexity of development. And when we do this, we find certain sets of rules. One set of rules we will find in fractals, things don't repeat. The wise man of the Sufi tradition, the wise man says, you cannot step into the same stream twice. First person to say that, they said, was Herculitus in 500 BC in Greece where he said, you can't step into the same stream twice. Now, certain people can recognize that and say, oh, yes, the water's always changing. It's never the same stream. Whereas a more scientific, more left brain type of person would say, no, it has to be the same, it has to be repeatable. Now, science has moved away from this in almost every issue, where now we have fuzzy logic. We talk about fuzzy numbers. We talk about chaos theory. We talk about fractals. We talk about dynamics. We recognize things don't repeat. Another factor in fractal complex systems, we will find that in a fractal complex system, very small things can generate very large changes. This generated what, was, what we know as the butterfly effect. They said that the beating of a butterfly's wings in Malaysia might create a thunderstorm in New York City because it was found that just a small little change might have a large effect on a fractal system. It was because of this when I first talked about this back in 19, oh, geez, it was back in 1989, and I did a presentation in London, London, England, about the QXCI, and I talked about the fractal systems and the butterfly effect. So they called it the butterfly device, and that was published in certain medical journals inside London, in the Journal of the Medical Art of Complementarity. And that's where we first got the butterfly as our system and as our logo. Because we wanted to be able to work with fractal systems, recognizing things don't repeat. There are trends, there are tendencies, but things do not repeat exactly. It just doesn't happen. You don't step into the same stream twice. And that small effects can have large effects. Small, tiny little stimulants can have large effects. That's called homeopathy where a small little, of, you know, small little stimulus can generate complete healing. It can happen, and that's homeopathy. So we want to start to look at this, and we want to recognize that reductionism does not work in a biological sense. If we want to understand biology, we have to forget our Newtonian reductionistic laws. We have to stop reducing the entire complexity of a patient to just his blood pressure. This is reductionistic study. We take people with high blood pressure. We don't do much else in the way of advertising. We don't look at their age. We don't look at, at, at sodium in the blood. We don't look at other things. Because the more we reduce the patient to one variable, the easier it is to control our study. So then our intervention would be, let's say, a pill, a synthetic pill. And can we take a high blood pressure and make it low? So thereby, we generate the study and the statistics of reductionism. We rob the ability of the patient. We're not looking at the individuality, not looking at the holism, not looking at the total 
quality of the patient. We're looking at statistical numbers because in that type of reductionistic statistics that's used by the drug companies, they have to do this in order to get their drugs credential. But it robs the effects of the patient. And what we're trying to say is that we need to be more holistic. We need to have more chaos theory, fractals, more holistic analysis. And with the development of the QXCI, we tried to make a holistic system that would touch on many different areas and bring all of natural medicine to an easy one system ability to use that could be easily networked and could be easily done with our patients. So we want to recognize that reductionism is dead and that we need to go beyond reducing our patients to simple diagnoses and reducing our patients to just one variable. This is a diabetes patient. No, this is a human being. This is a human being that has a complexity. They might not be able to control their blood sugar. That might be part, but there's a much more complexity, and we need to reduce our reductionism.